So Kimberly Knighty, good friend, uh, Director of Technology, North Canton City Schools. Are you with us, Kimberly? I am. Okay, great. There you are. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you got to hear a lot of that briefing. What did you think? I did. I did hear it. It's interesting. Um, I was just thinking, uh, I mean, we've all been through this. So, the, you know, the data just kind of confirms what we've been through. And it's just interesting to hear. Um, I like the interest between like how the administrators view things and how the teachers view things. And, um, you know, I think uh, that's important to get that message out. Um, to both really, to teachers, to make them understand that, hey, sometimes administrators, when they leave a classroom, they lose a little touch with the classroom. So cut them some slack, invite them in, you know, <laughs> have those conversations. And then obviously vice versa for administrators to understand that they need to be communicating regularly uh, with classroom teachers and in the rooms, you know, to see what, what's going on. So, um, so that disconnect doesn't happen. So, yeah. Yeah, and the workload yeah. discoveries that we had from the survey was like shocking. We we're like, wow, do administrators even know they're doing that to people? Or, you right. know, it's like, whoa. Um, well, great. Well, uh, do you want to share screen or do you want us to just talk through? Uh, well, I have, <clears throat> oh my goodness, excuse me. Um, I <clears throat> have a slideshow that I prepared that I've had uh, that I've shared with some other people in our county. Um, I thought what I would talk today about is kind of what we went through in North Canton. And, and to your point, you actually mentioned a lot of it with substitutes now coming in the buildings and mm -hmm. teachers using so many digital resources. Um, mm -hmm. My district, I'm kind of proud we actually came up with a way to handle this. And I thought maybe I would share that with, um, with everyone today. So, yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to learn a lot. Well, I'm going to put the spotlight on you and turn my camera off. Okay. Uh, sound off. And then do you have sharing? You can share screen? I do. I'm going to grab it right now. Okay, cool. Okay, so over to you then. All right. Can you see you. my slide? I can see it. Okay. Gosh, I can't see it. So I'm on mine. So I may need some feedback. If we're having trouble, just let me know. Okay. Um, <laughs> as I move through. So, okay. Um, so what I kind of wanted to share with everyone is, is like I just said, what, what we went through here in North Camp. We are a um, smaller district, I guess, compared, comparatively speaking, we have about 4,200 students and um, we have about 300 teachers total K, pre-K through 12. So I thought I'd start with just sharing about what kind of technology we already had in place when all of this started to happen. Um, our teachers have Lenovo Yoga laptops. So they were already very mobile in the classroom, uh, which was a good thing. They actually use, um, they connect to their projectors with a screen beam. So they're able to be untethered and moving around the room. And um, so they already kind of were very familiar with that technology. And then we're able to take that home with them when we were in remote learning. Our students have Chromebooks, uh, K through two uh, are in carts, but then when the pandemic happened, those devices went home with, uh, with the students. Grades three through 12, they also have Chromebooks that they take home all the time. They're in cases, stay on cases, <clears throat> and they keep them with them all the time. So we, we were very lucky and very prepared when everything happened. Um, we use Schoology as a learning management system. And I, and I heard you make that uh, clarification earlier too, is that, you know, we know that we're very lucky that we have a full blown learning management system. And I think that was a huge part of our success when we went to remote learning because our kids, our families and our, and our teachers were already in it and very used to using it. But I will tell you, that it even pushed, you know, the limits um, from there. I mean, they, even though they were using it, they found new ways to use it. Um, more families became engaged. So it, it took what we had and it just grew it exponentially. Uh, we have, we use Google um, for email and, you know, we have workspace, so we um, have access to all docs and, and things like that. And then we have a lot of additional, additional curriculum and, and tools. So I actually made a graphic that kind of shows uh, how we operate here in North Canton. And this is, as everybody knows, kind of ever changing as um, different tools kind of come and go. But I would say that the core, and I kind of made those really big in the middle, is our LMS Schoology along with um, our Google Workspace Suite. So um, that's kind of the middle. And then we have things that float around uh, beyond that. So we, we had video conferencing in place. I had just purchased a site license of Screencastify in the fall before 
remote learning happened. So thankfully, we had a video um, option for our teachers to be able to record lessons and do different things like that. Just um, we found it really helpful, not just for flipping the classroom, which is what we were engaging in when we purchased that, but also just even for directions for families and for students, just quick little videos of how to do some things like that. Um, we also had, um, you know, we had video capabilities within Schoology as well. So that is kind of cool. We have a lot of online content. We use a lot of different um, curriculum vendors and their platforms. And then there are digital tools that are spread throughout the district. Brain Pop is very popular. The one, and, and everybody knows that during that time, a lot of vendors were giving free uh, memberships to different things. And I get it. They, they wanted everybody to try it and then want it and then continue with it. And you kind of had to be aware of that because you can't pay for everything. But the one tool that we ended up sticking with after our teachers started using it was Cami. Um, it, it, it's a, a really kind of cool tool and it fits in with Schoology. They can connect Cami documents to assignments in Schoology. So um, they loved it and we ended up sticking with it. And um, that has been uh, kind of a cool addition to our, our whole learning, remote learning framework. But the problem was, so we have a way to deal with long-term stuff. So when they come in, we give them full access like we do our, our teachers. So they have access to the courses um, you know, they have email accounts and, you know, they're here long term. So we treat them just like an employee. What we had trouble with were short term subs. So that subs here for a day, two days, three days, maybe 10 days. Maybe there was a quarantine happening and that that person was going to be running the classroom for 10 days. In this environment, now that, you know, even the, the remote learning is, is over for some districts, again, those digital tools became so much more emphasized. Now that we're back in school, we're still using those tools. So what do we do when we have someone coming in the classroom on a short-term basis and we want that learning to continue? So um, we wanted them to have a way to communicate with their substitutes. We wanted them to have safe access to the digital materials. We did not want um, teachers leaving passwords, leaving their laptop in the classroom with passwords and, and things like that. Um, we wanted substitutes to be able to project especially in the lower grades, that's very helpful to at least even get things started, to be able to, to project and kind of give instructions. And then really that limited disruption to learning. We did not want to create accounts uh, if we could help it on our network for them. We didn't want to give them access to our network. <clears throat> Again, I said we didn't want our teachers to leave their laptops with login instructions and you know be sharing credentials because of the security risk behind that. So what we ended up doing and we got a little um, creative. We used some ASPR dollars because it really lent itself to, you know, this this was created by the pandemic. I mean, we always had subs, but we now had subs interacting with students in a very different way, using a lot of digital resources that we didn't have the capacity at that time to be able to help with that. So we purchased 14-inch Chromebooks uh, for our substitutes. Um, we came up with, we created a generic sub account. Now I will stop and say that this worked for us because of Schoology. I think if you have a full blown LMS like Schoology or Canvas or something like that, you can do this. I don't think you could do this with um, Google Classroom because in Classroom, everybody has to have a Gmail. And so we didn't, we are not creating, you know, Gmail accounts for these uh, short term subs. So I'll put that out there as a disclaimer. But we created a, um, a generic sub account for each building. Then we have a QR code um, that is that allows the substitute to log in. Um, so we actually have uh, the Chromebook set up in kiosk mode. And uh, I will go through and, and show you, I have some detailed pictures here. So when they come in and sign in in the office, there we have a laptop case with the Chromebook. We have um, a, a mouse with that. And then we have you know uh, a cable because we have to physically connect them to the screen beam to be able to project. Our Chromebooks cannot um, wirelessly connect only laptops. So, so this is kind of the pack that they get along with laminated a page of instructions of what to do. So when they open the device, um, they will have a page load that has a screen for a QR code. We've taken the QR code and put it on the back of the substitute badge, the lanyard for that day. They hold the QR code up to that, 
and then they are taken straight into a tab opens and takes them into Schoology. Um, they have then instructions to go to groups and then pick the building group that they're in. In this case, we have a, a building called Greentown. So they go in the GT substitute teacher group. Once they're in there, they can see updates on the landing page. So you can see this one today kind of gives them a little bit of instruction as to what to do. Um, and we're still building this. So I, I think we're even looking at new ways of sharing information in, in this area. But once they click on resources, they will see folders in, in our elementary schools. We did them by grade. In the middle and high school, we did them by subject. But if they're there for a certain teacher and they know they're a third grade teacher, they click on that third grade Greentown folder and then they will see all of the teacher names. They click on the name that they are subbing for and then that takes them into a folder where that teacher has put resources in there for their substitute. And you can see in this example, they have a folder that says read me first. If you go in that folder, it's actually a, a lesson plan for that day or that week that they can see. And then you can see where they have um, put some different uh, links to some things in here, like a slideshow, a lunch count screen, you know, just basically the things that they would need uh, to accompany the directions that are left by the teacher. I liken it to when I had a physical folder and I would put different things in the folder for my substitute, I would print them out and, and whatnot. It, it's just a digital version of sharing those materials. Any questions so far before I move on? Okay. All right. So now, um, yeah, I, I, it looks like there was a question. I'm sure I just couldn't find my mute button fast enough. <laughs> um, Timothy Wangler, do you, uh, let's just unmute him. Sure. Doug, can you unmute him? Sure. Uh, sure. Um, we use, <clears throat> we use canvas in Columbus city schools and we have, you know, a hundred and some, some buildings. Um, and so I'm just thinking about how that could work potentially uh, to give the short-term subs access. We have the same situation where a long-term sub gets added in the SIS right. um, to get access to all the same stuff the teacher has. Um, but the short-term subs have that difficulty. Do you, so the, the, the files I get through the, it's like a digital subfolder. Do you also provision your digital resource accounts with Schoology? Because we have the same issue with like, well, I can't get into, you know, our reading platform or the digital platform because we use Clever for those. Right. No, we have not gone down that road yet. Now, a couple of our teachers have got creative and they've said, okay, I really only just want to show instructions. So they may go in and take screenshots you know, of what they want the kids to, to do or to see because our children all have access, right? So it's more the adult leading them to where they want them to be um, or, or things like that. So they're, they're getting a little, we've just rolled this out to be honest with you. So we're just kind of um, moving forward slowly and finding new ways to do things. But you're right, that's again another problem because we don't want them having access to teacher credentials. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how to tackle that, but I know the teachers are taking some screenshots and I'm sure Canvas has the same thing. Schoology has a resource called a page. So you can create a page and then, you know, you can embed video, you can embed uh, graphics, you know, text. So they're finding different creative ways to maybe if they wanted a video to be shown, they can embed it in a page uh, and then have them project and show it that way. Does that help? It does. It does somewhat. And we've looked at the, the public facing pages in Canvas, um, but really only the adult in the room is the one who can't access the thing they need. All the, all the students can. Right. Um, but if you yeah. can figure out a way to, you know, build it into kind of that page of instructions so that they can project. I mean, and I'm not saying this is perfect. Like I said, we just rolled it out, but we, we didn't have anything. I mean, I was even asking in different groups around the state, like, Who's got an answer to this? And it was cricket. So um, we're thankful that we kind of came up with this so far. And I, I just think it'll grow. I think as more people start to maybe see this as a way to do it, we'll all learn from each other um, as we go. With 100 buildings, it's a little different than seven buildings. So you may have to like structure. We did a lot of the back end work for our buildings 
um, but each of each building could kind of take ownership of this and create their own group and create their own folders and whatnot. Um, I think it could be scaled, you know, to fit your needs. Um, for now, it's, a, it's certainly a good. It's certainly a good starting point. Thank you. Great. And please feel free to contact me. I mean, I, I even love feedback. If you do get things working and you're like, hey, we figured this out. You know, that that's the great thing I think also that's come from this is that we did collaborate, but we collaborate on such a deeper uh, and more widespread level now. Uh, I have contacts all over the place that I really um, am so thankful for because we all learn from each other, so. Hey, Kimberly, this is Leilani again. Um, yeah. I, guess, I guess my question is, <clears throat> what if the teacher just is like suddenly out? Okay, so we've talked about that. So what we did in the groups was that we gave, so in the group in Schoology, all of the teachers have admin rights. So let's say that you're on a team, you know what I mean? You can, you know, it's just like today, right? If, if it's a physical thing where somebody's out, they're scrambling to make copies or, or get something ready to help that classroom out. They have that ability to get in that teacher's folder and leave things. So, and a lot of them work together in groups um, and then share that information out to their courses. So, a lot of the times they have the same access to that resource that that the other teacher has. Um, so, we're encouraging our teachers to support each other in in this way, the same way that they would if they were gone and they had to make copies or or come up with something. We're also going to look at doing a lot of PD around this. Like, what are some different activities or things that you could put in here that are, you know, the the oh my gosh days, <laughs> you know, where you didn't get time to plan ahead of time? Could you put a folder in there with some activities that are relevant to your, may not be relevant to the actual um, uh, uh, thing that you're? I, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm losing my words. I'm sorry. To the actual work that you're doing right now, but it's still relevant to your course. You okay. know what I mean? So yeah. just, again, just yeah, that makes sense. You know, the way that you do uh, in a in a non-digital way, you usually have something, um, you know, that can be brought out and done if you're not there. Well, yeah, but you know what's so cool about this is that all the research data that we have is that you do need to build what I call the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you, you pretty much have to be lesson planned out in right. pretty much for the year or, or are you not, are they only planning like maybe a month ahead? So if they get sick tomorrow, there's still enough, right? But maybe right. the whole railroad tracks are not all laid. I mean, where are you at with that? Um, I think they, our team's focus, I mean, I think they have roadmaps. They have those longer term roadmaps. Okay. And then, you know, but they really build out week to week. And the one nice thing about having an LMS is that you can build as you go. And then you can bring that content later. Like you can archive it. And then next year, you're not starting all over again. That, that is available then to bring down into your course. So, you know, um, the more that you're in there and building and building in teams together, the more content you have available. Okay, so then it's not just reusable as is. It, it's reconfigured based on your uh, master calendar annually? Um, well, no, I would say they go more by like standards, you know, so they know which standards they're covering during okay. which part of the year. And so, um, you know, they, they know they have a roadmap as to what they're covering when but they get the nitty gritty of it, I think goes week by week or month and then week by week of that month, you know, kind of thing. Or even some of them plan for a grading period, you know, so a whole nine week period, you know, um, it, it's a little different. We don't, we don't have them structured into something uh, like that, like a year long, you have to, this is what you're doing day by day. Cause we also want them to be responsive to, you know, we want them looking at data and if, if they if they covered a standard and they do some kind of assessment and find out, wow, you know, we we have a lot of students who did not, <clears throat> you know, did not master that that content, then we want them to have that flexibility to go back and retouch some of that. So I see. Um, okay. You know what I mean? So we, we want them to be a little bit fluid and responsive to data and what's happening day to day in the classroom with the students. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. 
And yeah. then, okay, so last question, and then, you, and then I'll let you move on. Um, yeah. So let's say you have multiple subjects, right? You're not like a sole subject, one, one block teacher. How, how are they doing with that kind of workload? Like if they have like, um, if, if it's a K2 teacher and they, or yeah. something like that where they've got multiple subjects. Yeah. Yeah. So they, <clears throat> they go by, so like in the lower grades, we go by grade. So, you know, if, if you're a second grade teacher and you've got all the subjects, you would just build your folder to, you know, whatever you are working on at that time. Um, you know, and then in the higher grades, probably middle high school, you know, they're, they're pretty much locked and loaded into what they're like, they're a math teacher or, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, they're a math teacher or an ELA teacher or whatever. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, no, that helps. I, I'm just thinking of workload because, you know, you got a folder for science, a folder for math, a folder for right. language. And pretty soon you got like umpty ump folders. Of course, yeah. K through two isn't really, you know, they're not teaching physics or anything. So, right. you know, it's not, it's not that deep of a stack, but it's still more work. Um, I will say our K2 teachers, a lot of times just use their homeroom teacher or their homeroom folder. So in the LMS, so a lot of times you may have, you know, on the schedule, you may have the core subjects, but they may just choose to use just their homeroom folder and then they build everything in there. So they're not bopping between, you know, different courses like you would in a higher grade. Okay, I got it. And that's helpful. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm almost done just uh, showing you a little bit about, um, so like this is Schoology, so you can see that you can add a resource. You can, you know, they can build their own folders in there, which you can see this teacher, she put a folder in here for Read Me First, and then she has some other resources just listed here. Um, you can add an assignment, you can, you know, add, uh, we were, I was talking a minute ago about a page. So this is a page where they can put any kind of text in here. They have the ability to then embed, they can put um, images, they can grab a YouTube video, um, equations, and then down at the bottom, they can attach files, they can put links in there, and they can actually, this little microphone here is where they can record a video. So if some of them are feeling daring, which I, I would have loved this when I was in the classroom, some people don't like to be on video, but that you can choose audio or video, but you can literally leave uh, you know, directions for your class. Now, you could put it in the kids in the course folder, but maybe you just want to put it in the group folder and have the substitute play it so that the whole class hears it. And it could be you talking to your sub or you talking to your class, which I think is really powerful because, you know, it's, it's almost like being there um, uh, when you're not. So you don't have to need to type all of these individual directions out maybe you could literally use that audio video option to, to leave um, instructions. Um, again, just like a physical substitute folder, you know, we tell the teachers you have to keep these cleaned out. <laughs> so, you know, if you have put something in there, uh, if you were gone for a couple days and you had the resources in there, um, you know, you have to clean it out. Maybe you want to create a folder that says past, you know, um, resources and throw everything in there, or maybe you want to completely delete them out. It, you know, it's kind of up to you. I, I don't know. I think every teacher is going to uh, work differently with that. Some of them may want to keep them. Some of them may want to just start fresh the next time. But um, they've, they've been told that, you know, it's just like their physical subfolder. They have to keep that stuff current. So, um, again, all teachers in the building would have access, even at the high school. You know, if there's a math department and you and I both teach out in the one and you're out today, you know, I may have resources that I can put over into your folder. Um, or something like that. So, and then we are looking at more professional development. I did kind of a quick video for our staff just with some ideas, but we're looking at on our PD days, you know, even taking like, because you know how it is, some teachers will take it, run with it. Others are, will sit back and kind of watch for a while. So I'm hoping that I can take my, um, my teachers that ran with it and have them do some PD and talk about how it went for them. That, that's something that I am interested in uh, doing in the future. So that is uh, all I have uh, with my slides, but I'm happy to converse further or answer questions. Okay, so here, so I always come up with the dark underbelly side of things. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kimberly. Okay, um, so, so right here, you got this bullet point, like they can all put stuff in the folders. Okay, so I've been in places and I don't wanna name names of people, but, um, 
Whereas like somebody stuck things in folders and they, they created a subfolder and they did it wrong and they put it in the wrong place. Do you, do you have stiff protocols on educating people about how this is all done? Because if not, then those things happen. And then there's fights like you messed up my folders. Don't touch my folders. You know, it's like, it's like, ah, you know, it's a, so right. it's like the new area of, of uh, infighting that can start up. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, interesting question. Sure. I mean, because everybody has their own way of doing things. I think you're only going to see teachers in other teachers folders, like what you talked about earlier. Um, you know, something that just happens where um, there's an emergency or, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, when you scramble and run in a classroom, it's the same type of, of thing that I think would happen then. So I, I would say there'd be a forgiveness clause in there. Um, if <laughs> if that type of situation were happening. But I will say too that all of our teachers have had, we've had our LMS for, gosh, I think eight years now. So people are super familiar with it. And I think there would be a level of respect um, just because of that, because everybody uses it. And a lot of times they work together in teams. So they kind of have maybe their own system of doing things already. So in our district, I don't know that that would become an issue. I mean, I can't say it wouldn't in any district, but I, I think, um, I, I don't think it would. I think it would be okay. Hopefully, well, you're, well, you're a, lucky. The forgiveness clause. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, because somebody, you know, you know, what if somebody goes rogue and they're all upset and they erase stuff or like write over stuff or do something right. crazy, like that? It's like people will lose their minds. Well, um, the nice is if they're using Schoology stuff, if they delete something, there's a recycle bin, you can go get it back. So, okay. yeah. You know, auto archiving and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's super awesome. Well, I love this. I love the organization of it. I think, um, how many more minutes do I have? I think we have two minutes. So I'm gonna ask you one other thing. Um, my time, how, many, how much time? Oh, okay. Somebody has to give me the right time zone to think with because I'm always in all these different time zones. Okay, so we have we have quite a we have, we have 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, after. Oh, so we have time. Okay, good. So we have plenty of time. Okay, so let's talk about this. So um Kimberly, let's envision this system, right? And now you have an order come down. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. Let's say it's next year. Um where we got to personalize for every student. So that wraps into two things. Um, student identity, so that when your sub comes in, they have like a, something they can like view, like, mm, okay, get it, right? Like, I got it. And then two, alternate remedial folders of things based on identity or assigned already for the kid. Okay, so you're starting to see a little bit more complexity. So in your mind, are you starting to sort of look at that kind of thing? That's a great question. Um, so, and that would be difficult to be honest with you. Um, so we have our kids, uh, we, we have RTI groups set up. We have um, extension gifted, um, you know, all, all that. We have bike time when those kids go and, and, and engage in those activities. So I feel like some of that, would naturally get taken care of anyway, because mm -hmm. through the flow of the day, they would be, you know, kind of in the place that they need to be. Um, and I, I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, especially at like the three, let's say the three, five grade level, mm -hmm. if, if they have those uh, groups in place, the bike time stuff in place, if, if there's, there's usually a team of teachers. So if okay. one is out, then the other would be able to, to can kind of continue with that flow. I think the personalization piece would happen. Um, so, so this is more like a, these are the instructions for the day. And most of the content is built in the course. So okay. I, what I was showing you was a group in the LMS, but most of that personalization is built on the, on the course side of things. So teachers actually have great, like they have groups that they can create and they can assign specific things to specific individual children or groups of children. So a lot of that is already built in place in the course. And then the facilitation of that, you know, would be, um, I need you to open, you know, whatever name assignment is there. Um, and, and then they would already kind of be working in that content within their course. We did not 
give access to the stuff. We did not give the subs access to the courses because again, that's where more personal information is student, you know, um, the grade book and different things like that. If we gave them access to that, you know, we wouldn't want them to accidentally even be able to, like, like you were saying earlier, like cause that problem, cause that chaos of deleting a folder or, you know, messing something up in the grade book. So we purposefully put them a little more locked down in a group area. So I think you're looking at more instructional, like, here's how we're going to do things where all of that personalization and everything is already happening in the course. Okay. So you narrow cast. For the sub. Which, you know, if you think about it right now, when a sub walks in, a lot of times, I mean, you know, they don't have the ability to step in sometimes and full blown teach um, Mm -hmm. content. You know, I remember when I was growing up, it wasn't as difficult because you had a book and you had, you know, papers and it was pretty standard. And, you know, so sometimes we got instruction, sometimes we didn't. Um, So I, you know, I think this is, this is at least the layer above not being able to give anything um, to be able to give some digital resources now. Like I said earlier, I don't think it's perfect. There's no way we can make it perfect unless we give that substitute the keys to the kingdom like we do with the long-term sub. A long-term sub would have access to courses and would have access to seeing those groups. And, you know, we also do that with student teachers, you know, so student teachers, when they come in, we don't want that breakdown in learning to happen. So they have access to everything just the way the the classroom teacher has. Yeah, I like this. Um, Because technically, let's say a teacher goes out and they get sick, but then it turns into, it's not going to be one or two days. It's going to be weeks because now they need surgery or something, right? right? So then you have a, a ability to then take that sub and scale them in. Okay, I see what you're saying. Hey, uh, Tim, Tim Wangler, do you want to unmute? How do you guys do it for you? Um, we're say we have a similar issue where <clears throat> our, our substitutes get categorized into, I want to say, like more than 60 days and less than 60 days. So those who are considered more than 60 days are like in the benefit earning kind of catchment, if you will. Um, those individuals get more privileges and sign-on ability and whatnot and if they're added as a long-term sub they have the ability to post grades and things like that short-term subs don't um and a lot of those learning platforms tie back together through ltis or whatnot um and they post grades so even if a substitute assigns assigns something in one of those platforms or even in, in canvas like an official mark can be passed back and they don't want non I gotta say this non-teachers non-sanctioned individuals posting that kind of information yeah it's understandable but I I I think that both of you are dealing with something that's very complex because like I said if you have a teacher go down sick and then it results in surgery and then uh uh-oh in the middle of this 30 or 60 days there's a high stakes test that gets pretty hairy right away right like yeah um, yeah, sometimes yeah. building administrators put themselves in as the teacher of record for that course. Okay. <clears throat> like as a, as a secondary teacher. Oh, okay. Well, that's why they're all so busy and they, they don't have any time to talk right now because <laughs> this is happening. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Um, so, so Kimberly, the other thing I want to, I want to say is, is I, you might've mentioned this, but Okay, so let's say you're building this lesson sequence and you're foldering. And some of the stuff is like a doc, right? Like some document um, teacher made. Or it's like a document with links in it out to Discovery Channel or History Channel or whatever. But then let's say you got to log into like all those resources you show. Like that's one of the steps. Like go log into BrainPop. Is there a way that then, then, then this teacher and the sub could see the individual instructions. Cause let's say you're in brain pop or you're in like IXL or Edmentum or Ingenuity or uh, mind research, ST math and different kids are at different levels. So it's just maybe a basic instruction, like go log in, right? Like blah, 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 spend half an hour and then come back. Um, does, does, does the teacher keep track of those levels in there or how does that all work? Because 
you know, they could all be at some, you know, I'm at level seven of the game of math, you know, and I'm at level three. And, yeah, and I this- think some of them have dashboards built in, like even like a Khan Academy. I know mm-hmm. we have a third grade teacher who does math and science and she um, has her kids in Khan Academy a lot and she has a dashboard so she can see, you know, where they're at content wise. So if she's not there, that student can still log in and you know do those tasks and she can then still see kind of where they got to or what they did um i'm not familiar with every single one of them but i would say most of them have some type of teacher dashboard where they can monitor what the students are doing so the substitute would be saying okay maybe we're going to take 15 minutes want you to jump into khan academy you know and do 15 minutes of work that teacher would be able to verify that those students were in there and, and you know what they did so it is, I'm telling you, that is the hardest part of the conversation is, you know, all of the different systems and the logins. Um, it, it is, uh, there's no easy answer to it, you know, and in a lot of ways, you know, we're like clever, we're sending course information, course sections, to, you know, teacher information over, <clears throat> and that's how they're logging in. So you can't just jump in and, <clears throat> excuse me, my goodness, I don't know what is going on with my voice today. I apologize. Um, even IS. So we had to go through a thing where now we assign our ISs as secondary teachers, you know, the primary teacher and then the secondary teacher is the IS just so that they can also be on the rosters so that they have access to work with students in some of the different platforms that we have. So, you know, it's um, it's designed that way um, in order to give access, but it makes it difficult for these types of situations. So. The nice thing is that the kids still have access. Again, they're they're not they're they're still in their course, you know. So they still have links and, and different things over on the course side of things. Um, the group is set up really more for the substitute. Um, yeah. Like in other words, if they're if they're if they want maybe they want them to take them through a, a PowerPoint or something like that, give them extra instructions. They're projecting the PowerPoint, giving the instructions, but the students are working back in their course. Okay. So it can be a lot more asynchronous through the structure. I like that a lot. Which yeah, really because it's yeah. happening with remote learning too. I mean, you know, like the kids were doing, uh, you know, we had kids using Acellus. So, you know, we had our teachers working with them in some different ways through the LMS, but then when they were working in a cellist, they were over, you know, do, completing the work in a cellist. Teachers were then later monitoring to see, you know, where they were getting to and how they were doing. So I think yeah. we've just seen a lot of that remote work kind of come back into the classroom, especially with, to your point, personalized learning with choice, student choice. You know, they, they may all be working on different things. They may have a grid, you know, with different options. So they may not all be doing the same worksheet or, or whatever. They may all be doing something different. And in the regular classroom, that teacher may be introducing that time to go to that work or introducing a concept to then go and, you know, do work. So uh, in that way, I think this system works. It's still that teacher kind of focal point saying, okay, right now we're going to do this and, you know, giving them some access to at least instructions, digital instructions or, um, take them to a website or, you know, show a PowerPoint or you know, some, the teacher may take screenshots from BrainPop and say, this is the screen I want you on. This is what I want you to do. And then the kids go log in and do it. So yeah. it's, it's a layer on top that we did not have before. And I like that a lot. And I, I, I like it a lot. And I think, I think that your understanding that you just articulated um, is correct. Because if you look at this from a software point of view, all these little pieces change. Like the state's gonna hit you upside the head tomorrow with a different set of standards, who knows, right? So the discrete pieces of knowledge pervade by the teacher, right? Like what you do, they're all, all the little pieces are changing. It's like, here's the, you know, the, they're the legs under the water. Like they're still, they're always spinning, right? Like the pieces are always gonna change. So even if you bring in high value digital courseware, where it's like a gamified journey of math or language or whatever, and you're having kids divert, go over there, da, 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 come back. 
you still have to lay down this more sort of sequence of what to do and then give the, the teacher has to give herself instructions like, no, I'm going to lecture on this or, you know, like the whole thing, right? You're always going to be looking at K-12 from that sort of pieced thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not hopefully what you don't have is a 45 minute lecture lecture. <laughs> you know, like no, I think all of us want don't want that to happen um, anymore, you know, to just just stand there and lecture. So, you know, yeah. it's almost like that center approach where you have kids engaged in different activities at different times. And, you know, you, you are truly that facilitator. So that substitute for that day has to be that facilitator. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love this. I think this is a proper way to think about it all. Everything. There's different structures different people are going to use, but this is proper. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna. I just got a, like a note put in front of my face because that's how I get run on these webinars. Um, Lee Buddy is going to have to leave earlier than before. So I think what we'll do is wrap up with you, Kimberly. You can stay okay. on. We want you to. Um, but we're going to drag Lee into um, talking about what's going on with him. And uh, say once again, uh, Kimberly Knighty, you're wonderful and awesome. And thank you so much. This was really an eye opener for me. I haven't heard the substitute side story before. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess you're going to be on the panel too, right? Yeah, so. I'm going to hang out. I'm just going to mute myself here. <laughs> okay, love it. Okay, great.